Hey False Tube, it's Katie the Stash Queen coming to you on Sunday, March 13th. I hope everyone has had a wonderful stitching week. Spring break was this past week, so it was kind of crazy, kind of busy. Got a lot of stitching done, have a few holdovers, no big deal. Um, hopefully things start really getting back to normal this next week. Kids go back to school on Monday. Um, they're not overly thrilled, but I am. <laughs> good part about kids being off of school is that we don't have to all get up super early so that's nice and I'm not looking forward to having to get back up early but I'm looking forward to them going back to school we had a good spring break though it was a good time um it's just time for them to go back <laughs> so I have a lot to talk about today so let's go ahead and get started um it worked really well for me last week to have the notes on my screen simply because it took a whole lot less time to prep so I'm going to be looking, I have over here on my computer screen notes. So if you see me looking over there, that would be why. Better than looking down, right? Okay, Q&A. Danny Knitter asked, when I do have time to watch Floss Tube, what are my favorite channels? All right, I'm going to cop out and not answer that question because I have so many that I know I will leave someone out. Um, what I will say, and, and I'm not when I do a shout out, I want to make sure I have all of the proper information. And if I started listing people, it would just be crazy. So what I would recommend, if you are looking for new Floss Tubers to watch, um, subscribe to everyone who has subscribed to you. I can't tell you how many people who subscribed to me that I went back and subscribed to who weren't doing Floss Tube videos at first, but started doing them. And you're right there. You're already subscribed when they start. So it's right on the ground floor. And that's awesome. Um, Plus, you know, some people were already, sorry, I'm reaching for my drink over here, um, were already established floss tubers. It's a fantastic way to find new people. Um, if you're, the other option would be um, when in the search bar on YouTube to, ta to type in floss tube because most floss tubers put floss tube either in the title or in the um, keywords or do a keyword of cross stitch. I do both in my keywords personally. So, yeah, I'm going to cop out on that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I just don't want to hurt anyone's feelings because I know inevitably I would. And I love everyone that I watch as the many, 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 many videos on my Tubi watch list attest to. Uh, Southern Stitcher asked about the mystery stitch for Nora Corbett. I had said it was from Under the Sea Fabrics, but she couldn't find one. She went there. Could I provide the link? The information for signing up for getting the mystery, the Nora Corbett mystery stitch along information was on the um, Under the Sea Fabrics Facebook page. I'll put a link to it below. I don't know where she is in the process of getting, because uh, the second part just came out on the 29th. Um, and so I'm not... I don't know since it's it's three parts and since it's going through I, I don't know how she's doing that so but I'll put a link to the the um, under the sea fabrics and from uh, Facebook page below I will say from what I have heard from other between there's a um, stitch along group which I'll put a link to that below if I remember um, for the Nora Corbett mystery stitch um, I have read there and other places there are a lot of people who are getting it and it's supposed to be released in the US after the third part is released um, in Italy so but I'm not entirely sure but I'll put a link to both Under the Sea Fabrics and um, the Mystery Stitch Along group um, that are both on Facebook in the comments below. Alexis Richmond asks where do I put my finished projects? Right now if they are not an FFO they're in a box. <laughs> One of these days, I need to sit down and do a big FFO day. I have Mill Hill kits that need to be finished. I have pictures that need to either be framed or brought to the framers or made into something else. I have a few ornaments that need to be finished. Um, I just haven't had, I, I prefer to spend my time stitching than finishing. And by finishing, I mean FFOing, not finishing. I like finishing projects. Um, so they're in a box right now. And if they are done, it depends on what they are. I have some in my Christmas ornaments. So they're packed away with my Christmas stuff. I have some things that are hanging on walls in other people's houses. My husband has one that is at his office. The um, screw calm and go running is at his office. The clock is on my son's wall. The fairy's on my daughter's wall. It just depends on what it is. But if it's not an FFO, it is in a box in here. Lori Cook said or asked, do you talk about the threads of the month from Jottery last video? 
And then I, I've also mentioned Moe's before. I have some Moe's, my monthly Moe's to show when we get to stash acquisitions. Um, are the ones from Jottery, cotton or silk? The the threads in the month are cotton. She does sell silk threads and I have some of her silk threads. Um, I'm doing the Twisted Band Sampler with, or Twisted Rainbow, I forget which one it is. Um, I have both. One is in process, but their names are so similar and they're such a similar style. I can't remember which one's which. The twisted sampler that I am doing from Northern Expressions, I am doing in Jottery Silks. But the threads of the month for her are um, cottons. And then she wanted about Moe's as well. I do both cotton and silk threads of the month from Moe's. And she asked if there are links for these groups. I'll put a link to Moe's group and to Jottery's group um, below as well. Mo, the group page for Mo is where you need to sign up for what she, she calls them auto orders. Um, but it's basically your thread of the month and you determine if you want cotton for Mo, you want cottons or silks or new cottons, new silks, re-dyed cotton, re-dyed silks, and whatever, however many you want of those each month, I get one skein of new for both. Um, she also has her auto order for her fabric of the month um, and other information about her auto orders. Jottery, I think you sign up for it on the website. I can't remember now, to be perfectly honest. But in the group, you can ask and someone will point you in the right direction. So I'll put links to both of their groups below. Uh, Lori also asked, what's my preference when I work with the variegated flosses or silks? Do I cross as I go or do I go one way or come back? I cross as I go because you can lose the variegation if you go all the way down and all the way back. Um, and I'm one who actually likes the look of highly variegated. Some people don't. Some people like it more subtle, which is fine. It's a totally a, per a, per a uh, personal preference. Spit it out there, Katie. Um, but I cross as I go for hand dyes. Even if it is a quote unquote solid hand dyed, um, some of them, it, it is a subtle variegation change, very subtle, like with your weeks or your gentle arts um, or your classic color works. There's some that are quote solid colors. Um, but if you look at them really closely, you can see a very slight variegation and I will still do those one X at a time. It's just the way I do it. Um, Catherine Connolly asked, Kevin Connolly and actually Linnea Coates both asked similar questions in regards to what are the difference between all the different types of fabrics, Joblin, Cashel, Lugana, Belfast, etc. Um, it's what they're made out of. Uh, jo and I can't tell you <laughs> off the top of my head what everything is made out of. I will say Belfast and Cashel are both linens. So you stitch them the same way as you would stitch an even weave, but they're not even necessarily. Some are more even than others, but they're not they're not even. Even weaves like Lugana and Jobelin are specific even the way it's made. Um, I have a link that for, to a blog post that Clouds Factory did um, that really does a good job explaining the different types of fabrics and I will put a link to that below for more information but it's really essentially what they are made out of. Joblin is by far the softest and that's one reason why I like working with it so much um because I like the soft fabrics and I can make it tight as you guys have seen before in my tension tutorial um so that's personally what I like working with best. Uh, Mamola Stitches asked, she says she's about to kit up her first Mirabilia and she wondered if I thought it would look good stitched on Ada. Would it look good stitched on Ada? Yes. Would I recommend you stitching it on Ada? No. And the reason it, sorry, got an itch in my eye. The reason is because there are usually some, um, partial stitches, quarter stitches, half stitches, and some of the finer details of Amira. And those are a lot harder to stitch evenly on an Ada fabric because Ada doesn't, you have to pierce the Ada to do those partial stitches. Will it look good is not a question. I think it would look just fine. Um, I've seen people on the groups do them on Ada. I just would not recommend a mirror because of the details that go into it. I would not recommend doing a mirror on Ada just so that you don't have to worry about piercing the fabric. Um, Amy Baruch asked if I had ever UFO'd or given up on a project. If so, how do I know it was time to throw in the towel not to stitch on it again? It's been a really long time. Um, I don't like UFOing projects, honestly. That's one reason why I have a rotation because there's some of these projects that if I was only working on this project and I didn't have anything else to work on would have been UFO'd a long time ago. Not because I don't like them, but because they would have worn me out. 
um, Christmas, the Christmas countdown with the red border is the one I'm thinking of. Angel of Compassion with the, oh my God, how much credit can there be is another one that I can think of. Um, but because I do them in rotations, it's not bad because I can handle it a day and then put it away when I'm tired of it for a time. Um, the last one that I can think of that I threw something out, uh, was actually Flames of Desire. I had started it. I was doing it, um, two over one full cross on 20, a uh, 25 count fabric. And I hated it. I had done a page finish. The color was not what I wanted of the fabric. Cause I, you guys have seen before that Flames of Desire isn't a full coverage piece like most Hades, it's partially. And I didn't like the color of the fabric that was behind it. It was getting, I, the page that I started, I had started on the top left page like you normally do with most Hades. I didn't do it this time with my Flames of Desire, but I had started on the top left and it's all wings and it had gotten so hard to push the needle through um, in some of these places where it had gotten extremely confetti heavy. And I just said, I can't do this anymore. And I threw that piece of fabric away and I ordered new fabric and I started it again in a different place, doing it one over one, a whole lot easier, a whole lot better. I'm a whole lot more happy with it. Um, before, before that, and that was a couple years ago. Um, it's been a really long time. Most of the projects that probably UFO'd were either because I was young and I got bored or I moved and didn't know where I put stuff. But now that I have everything pretty much in this room or down by my stitchy spot, I don't have the excuse of losing things to make them UFOs. Um, for all the stash that I have, everything that I have, with the exception of maybe one or two things that were gifted to me, and those are primarily books, um, I wouldn't have it if I didn't think I could possibly stitch it and enjoy stitching it. So for all the concerns about buying stash, everything I set I have is something that I would like to do. Um, I don't start a project if I don't think I will enjoy doing it. And some projects you find as you go in, because for whatever reason, it becomes harder than what you expected it to be. That's where, like I said before, that's where my rotation works really well because I can work on it, put it away, come back, work on it in little bits and pieces, and it'll eventually get done. I do finish pieces. I have a finish to show today. They do get done. Um, but it doesn't provide the pressure of, oh my God, I started this piece. I'm saying that a lot today. Um, I started this piece. I have to push through it because I spent this money. I, if I like the finished product, it'll go through eventually, even if I have to only work on it in bits and pieces. That's why I'm a big fan of the wine and whips um, method or the Katie method it's, as it's been dubbed by many. You have a project, you want to do it, you want the finished project, but you're having issues where you are. Sit down, work on it for a given length of time, then give yourself permission to work on something else. Every stitch is a stitch closer to finishing. And there you go. And those are my Q&As for the week. So thanks everyone as always for the questions. You know I love them, so keep them coming. Okay, week in review. I have a finish, woo, yay! And I'm kind of crazy at it. Happy everything is done. And here is the final piece. I'm gonna take that off because I don't need it there anymore. Happy everything. It needs to be ironed, obviously, but this is um, Happy Everything by Diane Arthur on 28 Cashel Linen and Treasure Trove from Silk Weavers. So let's do a little bit of close-ups here. There's Happy. My signatures fit in down there with all the detailing. And then here's everything. Well, part of it, I'll do every with its detailing and then thing. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I got this pattern as a Christmas gift. I started it on Christmas Day. I finished it on the 11th. So, yay! I do have plant. This is one that's actually going to not sit in my box to be done um, because I am going to have plants with it. I'll just say that. Because you never know who's watching this video. So I'll just say I have plans. I'm good at that. So yes, I had a finish. It's my first finish of 2016. I had said at the um, 
end of the year last year that if I could get 16 finishes in 2016 that would be awesome because I got 15 and 15 so there's one I'm on my way all right rest of the week my monthly stitch alongs here is magical creatures calendar by clouds factory on 32 opal belfast and diva from hand Eyed fabrics by stephanie using flosses and silks from most sale here's where i got to on march the phoenix is almost done the only part of the phoenix that isn't done is the eyes but i like trying to do the colors at once and since i only have to do those two black x's for the eyes and i will probably be outlining march like I have the other months, I'm just gonna wait and do it at the end. But the Phoenix is done otherwise. I really like how the variegated floss worked. It looks really cool if you ask me. And so I'm working on this back part and I'm gonna to try to finish it this week so I can have that done and out of the way. And then here's the full piece as it stands right now. And of course my little minder from Minding My Miners who's chaining, changing ownership in the next couple of weeks. So continue working on that this week. And then next is Postcards from the World from Clouds Factory, which is on um, 32 Jobelin in Ice Goddess from Handed Fabrics by Stephanie using flosses from Mo's and silks from Mo's Sale. And here is where I got to on it this week. So I've got the little permanent building done, started, and then I did the red. Cause I do one color at a time. I had debated on if I was going to change the little foam box into TARDIS blue and I'm not because I'm doing all of the TARDIS or I'm doing all the Whovian stuff on my pumpkin passport and I decided that the red foam box is actually the secret entry to the Ministry of Magic. So there you go. So yeah. Yay! And here's the full piece so far. So we'll see if I can get that part done. If I can get, my goal this week is to get these monthly stitch alongs for the, for the month done. We'll see what happens. And then the last one I have for the monthly stitch alongs is my Pumpkin Passport by Frosted Pumpkin. And this is on 28 Jobelin and Ice Goddess from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And here is where we are at this point. I changed the color of the windmill wings because I couldn't see it on the fabric. I like that green. I just think it's kind of cool. So the windmill's almost done. Got some of the buildings in. I have a couple more plans for this block to hoovianize it, but I need to finish stitching the buildings in first. So if I can get the march portion done so the actual just march portion done then i can continue working on the border and stuff for the rest of the month so yay so those are the monthly stitch alongs my annual mania stitch along for this past week it was a brooks books week for me And I worked on Spirit of Cross Stitch Angel by Brooks Books. And I finished all of the stitching on the wings and I started working on the beading. So there's some of the beading. So next time, and I realized as I got started on the beading that I was actually missing a bead, like a color of a bead. So that's been ordered. So the next time this comes up, I should be able to finish the beading on the wings because it's really just outside and then some little beads here on the flowers. Same thing over here. And then I can move on to the next part. Yay! And then, okay. For Stitch Mania this month, the monthly stitch along is It's Not Easy Being Green. And I told you guys last Sunday to come back on Tuesday to see what I had done, what I'd worked on, and see what was coming next week. Yeah, that video didn't happen. So what I'm going to show you, and it's not going to happen for the rest of this month, coming in to do a two minute video, it's, I've got other stuff I need to do. So what I'm going to show you today, I'm going to show you what I finished or the one piece I worked on for week one. I'll show you what I'm working on for week two. Week two still goes today and tomorrow is still part of week two. So I'm still going to work on these for a couple more days, this next, the week two piece for a couple more days. And when I get to my plans for this upcoming week, I will show you what I will plan to work on on week three and then do that next weekend. I'll show you what I did on week two and week three up to that point and then show you what I plan for week four. It's just easier than coming and doing a two minute video. 
So for week one, I worked on Anne of Green Gables from Soda Stitch. And here is where I ended up stopping this time. Got all the stitching on these guys done. So now it's just working on the back stitching in this middle portion before moving on. Back stitching really makes it pop. Yay! And this is on um, 28 Joblin in Vanilla Mint from Under the Sea Fabrics. And it's got a cute little um, Anne of Green Gables book needle minder from Pinoy Stitches. <sighs> So this week, starting on Tuesday, I started working on um, Christmas Elegance by Mirabilia because, oh my gosh, how much green is on that girl. And here's where I am at this point. Let's see. She is being done on 32 Belfast in Silent Night from Under the Sea Fabrics. Pretty much this dark green that's over here under her glove and all the way down, that's what I've been working on. So I've got a couple more days that I can work on this and I'll probably work more on that dark, dark green. And I've got a wooden needle minder from Delicious Threads. But yeah, yay green. Let's get this folded up. Cause see there's a lot she has so much green in her dress but that one color green that i'm working on and i forget which color it is off the top of my head is one of the biggest colors of green and i actually finished one skein of it and had to pull my vintage dmc skein and luckily the colors matched so that made me happy so i'm going to continue working on this for a few more days and then i'll show you on sunday next week where it ended up i'll get to the other one here in a few minutes so, Year of Starts, another successful week in the Year of Starts this week. Yay! So, let me show you guys what I worked on. First one that I did was Pretty Parasols, and this is from the World of Cross Stitching issue number 224. And I did this one, or I am doing this one, on 32 Belfast in Misty Morning from Under the Sea Fabrics. And here is where I was able to get to my 30 minutes in. Just some white of the first parasol. And then my cute little magnet transform needle minder. I just like the purples and grays on this. I think it looks really cool. So that one will go away. Then the next one that I worked on was the March portion of the Year of Celebrations from Hands-On Designs. It was in the Cross Stitch and Needlework magazine starting, I believe, in January 2014. So I worked on March. And this whole set is being done on 32 Belfast in Autumn from Under the Sea Fabrics. And here is the March portion, or the mark with a little few more lines. This is being done one over two. And here's the full piece at this point. So it's slowly coming along. Then the next one that I worked on was classic Christmas charm ornament number one. So that's this ornament down here. And it is being done, this whole set is being done on um, 32 Joblin in Simply Sage from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And it's from Barbara Anna Designs from the Cross Stitch and Needlework magazine starting in September 2014. Here's where, here we go. So I had started this one for one start, the border. And then here is the beginning of the border of the first ornament. So, and I've got down here my little... Santa needle minder from my from Nifty Needle Nannies. So yeah, it's it started. Then keeping with the Christmas theme, I did a couple few Christmas patterns this week. We had the Nativity Silhouette from Cross Stitch Needlework Magazine 20, January 2015. 
And this is being done on um, 28 Joblin and Chocolate Milk from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And here is the red that we got to at this point. The red background and all that. I've got a little cute little Linus Needle Miter from Minding My Minders. So yeah, got that one going. Sorry, hit the thing again. One of these days I won't have you guys on something that can rock. Next one that I worked on from the Festive Wreath Collection that was in um, Cross Stitch and Needlework Magazine's Holiday 2015, I started working on the angel ornament. This is the full set of ornaments, but I started working on the angel. And I'm doing her on silver perforated paper. And here is what I was able to get to. Ah, can I block? No. So, got some of the blue done. Get it in here, and it can go over here to be filed away. Then the next one for the year of starts was Chinese lanterns, and this is from World of Cross Stitching, issue number two twenty six. And I'm doing it on thirty two Belfast and Emerald Grotto from Under the Sea Fabrics, using silks from Mo's Sale. So I just have the cute little butterfly that's right in the middle done. Isn't that sweet? And I have my Blingy Mulan needle miter from Nifty Needle Nannies. So it's barely a start, but it's a start. I did realize I have to order sequins for that pattern because let me show you. Hold on. Put this in here. And I can show you. Like, you see all these details right there? Those are sequins. So, I'm going to have to order some sequins. Then the last one that I worked on for the year of starts was the March Daffodil Teacup from the Teacup Collection by Vermilion Stitchery. And I'm stitching this whole set on 32 Belfast in Whimsical Winter from Under the Sea Fabrics. And there is the start on the daffodils. And here's all three at this point. And here's my little coffee needle minder from Minding My Minders. Yay! So another seven starts down. I did make a decision this week about the year of starts. In May, because I was looking at, I started prepping this week to get ready to start doing the April prep video and stuff and prepping and looking in advance. Hello? Oh, do you want to come and show everybody your haircut? Come here, come say hi. David got a haircut this week. A long overdue haircut. Come here. Come on, you can step over it. I'll help you, hold my hand. Come sit down. Look everybody, he got a haircut. He looks so handsome. Oh, don't look at me, look at them. They don't want to see the back of your head. I bet Tracy wants to see some creepy eyes. Can you show some creepy eyes? Oh, come on. Yeah. I don't do creepy eyes as well as you do. Oh, show them. Don't show me. Look at them. No, you're being silly. Okay. If you're not going to show, and if you're not going to look at everybody, can you uh, give me a hug? Okay. I will try. Okay. He did get a haircut. He desperately needed one. Close the door, please. Thank you, my love silly shy boy so that was the year of starts like I said I, I did decide May last year for mania the concept behind mania is 15 starts in 15 days I did 35 starts in May because I was celebrating my 35th birthday and clearly because of the year of starts I was already gonna do 31 starts in May already anyway I'm adding five more to do 36 for my 36th birthday so there are more starts coming Okay, whips for the week. Um, I was only able to get to three whips this week. Like I said before, if time runs out in, in a day, whips are the ones that are the that end up getting held over. Um, and because it was spring break, we were doing a lot of stuff during the days, and stitching didn't always get started until later in the evening. But I think this upcoming week, now that life is starting to return to what we understand as normal, we should be able to be 
of your holdovers this week. Anyway, first one that I did is an electronic pattern. I will put a link to it in the box below, but it is Harry Potter's Foes from Wee Little Stitches. Let me get this. And I'm doing this one on 32 Joblin and Butterbeer from Under the Sea Fabrics. So I started Fenrir Greyback next to Snape. And here's my little Harry Potter needle minder from Minding My Minders. Then the next whip that I worked on was my Horn of Plenty. That was in, it's by Sharon Pope for Just Cross Stitch Magazine's September, October 2012 issue. And I'm doing this one on 32 Lugana in doubloon from Picture This Plus. Let's see, got a little bit more brown going on. I got my little pumpkin needle miter from Gina's Unique Boutique. And then the last whip that I was able to work on this week was from Joan Elliott's Cross Stitch and Sayings, Sentiments and Sayings book. And it is, It's My Mess. This one right here. And I'm doing this on a 32 Belfast solo die from Silk Weavers. And I worked more on her shirt here. Got my little K needle minder from Minding My Minders. This is a really pretty pale green. It just always, I mean, it's a little bit better from back here, but it gets lost in the camera. So that was my week last week. Lots of stitching. I'm happy with all of it. Stitching is my therapy. So plans for this upcoming week. Um, I'm going to continue working on the monthly stitch alongs. That is my big goal this week is to get those three monthly stitch alongs done um, for the month. We'll see what happens. Uh, now that Happy Everything is done, I will have a new focus for the finish piece to work on. And I decided um, that I am going to work on finishing my box of delights from Black Work Journey, which I'll put a link to it below because it's a free online pattern. Here is where I'm starting it from at this point. It is being done on 32 Joblin and Chocolate Milk from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. I wanted to get all of the blocks and border done before I did any of the interior portion of the delights. So I think I have two more of the delight sections to go and then the little interiors and the border. And then I can start filling them in. And when I fill them in, I'm using flosses from the Jottery Designs that I've picked up. So, and my minder is a Jamie Fraser needle minder from Minding My Minders. So I'm gonna start working on that. Maybe get it done. That would be awesome. Then for my annual Mania Stitch Along, this week is a Chatelaine week for me. And up in the rotation for Chatelaine is my Medieval Town Mandala. And it is being done on 32 Lugana in Truffle. Let me see, gotta scroll down so I can see what the rest of my stuff is. From uh, 32 Lugana in Truffle from Picture This Plus. And here is where I left off. I was working on sparkles. So here's where I am, where I'm going to start from. And another Jamie Fraser needle minder from Minding My Minders. It's a Jamie Fraser kind of week. See, I've been started working on the Petite Gallery Treasure Braid. So yay. Beading I'm leaving until the end and quite a bit of what is still left in these squares for the garden are beads. But that's waiting till the end. So I'll see how much progress I can make on this this week. And then the monthly mania stitch along, like I said, it's, it's still, it's not easy being green. I will continue working on Christmas elegance today and tomorrow. But then on Tuesday, I will start week three, which is going to be Dreaming of Tuscany from the Dimensions Gold Collection Petites. Lots of green in that. 
And here is where I am starting from on this piece. And I've got a key needle minder from Gina's Unique Boutique. So we'll see how much I can get done on that. But that I won't start working until Tuesday. I will show you how where I am on it on Sunday when I come back to do my weekly update. And then I'll still have a couple more days on it, but that's okay. So year of starts for this week. First pattern is a digital pattern. Um, I'll put a link to it below, but it's Inigo Montoya from Pixel Power Design. And I'm going to be doing it on this pretty dark blue scrap piece of fabric that Garrett gave me. Couldn't tell you who it was by. Count looks to be at least 32. Um, but I'm going to do it on him, do the, him on this. And I've got a little Princess Bride needle minder from Minding My Minders. Then, so that's today. Let's get that in here. Sunday. Monday, I'm going to, from the Bewitching Cross Stitch book by Joan Elliott, I'm going to start working on my Celtic wheel. Isn't that awesome? I love that. It's so pretty. And I am doing that one on 28 Joblin in Thornhaven from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. Here's the fabric. Pretty foresty green color. And I've got this little Celtic, full Celtic knot from Nifty Needle Nannies in my minder. Then on Tuesday, I've got another digital pattern. It is... Beauty and the Beast by Dona Stitch. And I'll put a link to the pattern below. Um, I am doing that one on 32 Opal Lugana and Caribbean Tides from Under the Sea Fabrics. Sparkle, sparkle. It's kind of hard to see the sparkle back, but there's sparkle. See? Sparkle, sparkle. So that's the fabric I'll be working on. And I've got a blingy bell needle minder from Nishki Needle Manny's. Then the next one that I will start, I think of all of the patterns that I'm starting for the year of starts, I think this one is my favorite title pattern. It's called, look what I did. <laughs> it's this little ghost with the quilt that is from the Just Cross Stitch September, October, 2013 issue. And that's so cute. Look what I did. That's what it's called. Look what I did. And I'm just gonna do it on a 32 count natural linen. And I've got a little candy needle minder from Minding My Minders. It's Halloween candy, hello. Best name of a piece, really. All right, come on. My Ziploc bags are not being cooperative today. I keep having the little zipper thing come off. Luckily, it's easily reattached. Then the next one I'm gonna start, um, I'm gonna do all three of these eggs on one piece of fabric, but the one I'm gonna start is Ukrainian Egg A, which is this one. And these three are in the Just Cross Stitch April 2015 edition. And I'm gonna do all three on um, this piece of 32, it's a big piece, it's a half yard piece, 32 Joblin and Sailor's Delight from Hand Eye Fabrics by Stephanie. And I'm gonna do one at each quadrant and then have a fourth quadrant to spare. And I've got a little star needle minder from Misty Needle Minis. But all three are going to be done on this. Then the next one, I'm going to fold it up here, get it in here. The next one I'm going to start is Miscellany in Red. It's a Liz Almond pattern that was in the Just Cross Stitch February 2014 issue. And I'm just doing this one on a 28 count white Joblin because I want the red just to stand out on the white. And I've got this really cool red heart needle minder from Mr. Needle Manny's that I'm gonna use. And then the last of my new starts this week is from the Just Cross Stitch 2009 ornament issue and it is Cross of Christmas by Big Toe Designs. This one right here. 
two colors. And I am just going to be doing this on a piece of the scrap fabric that I did um, Doctor Who clock on. See where I cut it off? <laughs> um, and this is a 32 Opalugana jewel from Under the Sea Fabrics. So I'm going to do it on this. Measure it out, figure out where I'm going to do it on. So that is the year of starts. Whips for the week. I want to get all of these whips worked on this week. It would be nice. Wish me luck. First couple are holdovers that, or first four really are holdovers that I didn't get to this week. First off is Italian Vista. That'll be worked on today from Dimensions Gold Collection. And like I said, it's a gold collection, so it's being done on kit fabric. Here is where I am on it at this point. And I've got my um, Cameo Needle Minder for minding my minders. This is my oldest whip, by far. Then, yeah, got caught on the cards. We have Jeweled Pear from Mill Hill. That's the little kit, that's what it looks like. And here is where I am on it at this point. Yeah, it's like a light greenish, a green, yellow, yellow, green paper. It's not your screen. It's the actual color of the paper. Then I have on Tuesday, Kringle Wreath, also by Mill Hill. And not nearly as far along on that one, but here we go. So Wednesday is the last of my holdovers from this week. Big pile of stuff. It takes a lot of work to prep for these and then to clean up afterwards. Um, it's Let's Do Wine by Ursula Michael. And I'm doing this one on... Uh, 32 Lugana in Sorbet from Picture This Plus using silks from Moe's Sale. And here is where I am at this point. Like I said last week, I'd like to finish all of the words in the bottle. I've got a little ways to go. Then the rest of the week are not holdovers. These are new ones that I pulled out for this week. We've got from the Just Cross Stitch 2006 ornament issue. It is Lights of Advent by Erica Michael Designs. This one right here. And I'm doing this one on 32 Opal Lugana in Winter Solstice from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And here's where I got to when I started it. And I've got the Nativity Needle Minder from Nifty Needle Nannies. Then the next one is from the Disney Dreams collection, the Thomas K. Disney Dreams collection. It's The Little Mermaid. And here's where we are on this one. Come on. So that's where we are at this point. Got my pinup uh, Ariel from Gina's Unique Boutique. Then the last whip that I have scheduled for this week is, uh, you guys have seen this one before. It is from the 2010 Just Cross Stitch Ornament issue. And it is Madonna and Child by Brooks Books. One of my rotation pieces for the annual sales. But it's up alphabetically now. So here's where we left off last time I worked on it. So we'll see what I can get to this week. So that's the week ahead. We'll see how much I actually get done. So that leads me to stash acquisitions. Um, I had a lot of stash positions this week. Sorry. Uh, first one I'm going to show 
we went out as a family to the mall on Friday and we went to Barnes and Noble. And usually when I go to Barnes and Noble, they have one, maybe two cross stitch magazines. It's just that Barnes and Noble isn't good about stocking cross stitch magazines. And I have subscriptions to just cross stitch and to cross stitch needlework because those are the two that I like the most. But as you've seen through my year of starts, I have quite a few things from World of Cross Stitching. I have some plan from Cross Stitch Gold and all those other cross stitch magazines, the British ones. So when I went, there were one, two, three, four, five, seven different cross stitch magazine book things there. I got them all. It had been a while since I purchased anything from the store. So. I'm not going to go through all of these. Um, if there are any that you would like me to do a more detailed run through on, let me know in the comments and I can do that next week. Um, some of these I have already looked through and pulled out patterns that I'm going to do for the year of starts. Um, so you'll see some of this again, but I'm not going to go through all these right now because we're already 45 minutes in and I it's one o'clock and I have to still go get ready for my dad's party tonight. So first one I got was the Ultimate Cross Stitch. Volume 8, 2016, 298 charts. Some of these charts look familiar because it's by the same um, designer. I think it's World of Cross Stitching and all that, but there's a lot of really cute motifs in this one. Then I got, um, this is issue number 238 of the World of Cross Stitching. I got it because of those ladies up there. You will be seeing them again. And that actually came with a cute little Stitch Cookie Bear freebie. Hello. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. <laughs> That's the other reason why I'm not going to go through all these right now. Then I got Cross Stitch Gold. It's the May-June 2016 issue. And then I have the 365 Cross Stitch Designs for 2016. I think a few people have gone through this one already. Then this is Cross Stitch Crazy. Um, I can't tell which issue it is because the sticker's over it, but hey, it's this issue of Cross Stitch Crazy. And it came with a cute little freebie as well. Then this is the March 2016 Cross Stitcher issue. I used to get, be subscribed to this. And it came with a cute little Mother's Day card. And the last one is the World of Cross Stitching. This is issue 239. It's not the one with the really pretty peacock in it. That's the next issue. And it came with these cute little gift tags. So if there's any of those you'd like to see in more detail, let me know. Then I got my latest order from Nifty Needle Nannies. So we have a... Daisy Girl Scout to go with the Brownie and Junior that we already have. And a little cute little bunny and a cute little pumpkin. And then I have a Harley Quinn and a Glinda because I couldn't resist that Glinda or that Wicked Witch. I'm not as big into Wizard of Oz as Dear Coffee Stitcher is, but they are really adorable. I also got a needle minder from the Frosted Pumpkin, because they had their next release. Let's see, is it, get it out so you don't see the glare of the plastic. Um, their limited edition needle minder that they had um, for whatever show it was. This little guy, so cute. I would love to get my hands on the other limited edition needle minders from Frosted Pumpkin that I missed. Then, I'm really glad I ordered this one I did. Um, someone had pointed out to me, actually several someones had pointed out to me that uh, Heaven and Earth Designs had started doing some needle minders. And the one needle minder that they specifically wanted to show me was the one of Space Traveler, which I got. And then I also got a Heaven and Earth Designs needle minder because I have a couple of Hades that I can use that for. But of course, since I got that needle minder, I had to go ahead and order the Space Traveler pattern. Not sure when I'm going to do it. But I've got it, and I'm glad I ordered it when I did because it's apparently now been retired in the couple of days since I ordered this and this. They're neither one are available on the website anymore. I think because of drama with copyright. But I'm excited. I had had my eye on Space Traveler for a long time, so I'm glad I finally got it. And then 
my monthly order from Moe's, my monthly threads of the month. Um, I haven't even twisted these up yet. So, and this is the first time I'm actually looking at them. This is Chagall silk, pretty brown, orangey and yellow. This is Monet. This is Degas. Grays and blues. This is Armani. Gucci. Okay, so we had a fashion line apparently. This is Klimt. K L I M T. See, Klimt. I can't ever pronounce that, but it's pretty. Then we have Magritte. Then this one is Cardin, C-A-R-D-I-N. Pretty purples. Versace. Greens, oranges, and blues. Pretty cool. This one is uh, Saint Laurent. Pretty. Prada. The devil wears Prada. I like the Read in that a lot. This is Lauren. That's really pretty. This is Renoir. It's green and brown. Warhol. Good old Andy Warhol. Dali. Salvador. Picasso, kind of like a grayish green at the end almost. Chanel, purple, greens, yellows. Dior, I like Dior's, that's pretty. Greens, blues, purple, pink. Matisse. And Gaultier. I'm not big on fashion, sorry. So those are my stash positions for the week. Uh, upcoming plans, I'm working on getting things ready for my April year of starts preview. Gotta make sure I have everything that I need and get all that ready to go. Um, with the kids going back to school, I can actually finally, hopefully, maybe start really focusing on this room. If I can spend about an hour a day just picking stuff up, throwing things out, moving things to other rooms, getting the furniture up here that needs to get up here, that would be great. So keep your fingers crossed that I can start really working on that. Other than that, um, I'll continue playing on Flossable because it is, I'm a beta tester for it and it's a lot of fun. And otherwise, I will see you guys next week. Bye!